Hello there! In today's video, I am going to share one way that you can help your child have neater and more accurate handwriting. So if we haven't met, my name is Miss Audrey from AudreyTutors.com and on this channel you will find videos all about handwriting and building strong, confident readers no matter what level they are currently at. So if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so that you will be notified when new videos are put out so that you can help your child continue on their journey to become lifelong learners. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about handwriting and how to help your struggling writer or sloppy writer become more aware of um, his or her efforts to produce nicer handwriting. Now I have found like if a student is struggling to um, follow the motions in making the letters to break it down to the smallest unit and have them practice one unit such as like a tall line down and then the other unit like hook around and practice that again and again having that full attention and then focusing on the size and um, the neatness of it and the proper formation to build that muscle memory instead of just getting them to do a lot of writing but doing it in the wrong way because it's not good for the muscle and they're not going to have a lot of fluency if they push up um, instead of pull down because that's an easier muscle movement for them to um, go down and then up and hook around. And you wanna make those all in one movement. And if you go to my blog, you're gonna be able to read all the different ways that um, handwriting and having it taught properly actually affects the brain and then correlates, which is amazing. Wait, sorry, I haven't told you yet. It actually correlates with reading fluency. So when students can write 40 letters from A to Z and then start over at A and keep on going and they have a total of 40 letters written in one minute, they are fluent readers. And this data is more strongly supported at the younger levels. And so that just shows the importance of not just letting the child decide when they want to focus and try to go, but giving them the tools to continue to make progress. And Make sure that you didn't hear that I said that every writer should or student should be at the certain level forming the perfect letters. No, we figure out where they're at, we challenge them, and then with just a little challenge, and then we continue to encourage them until they are forming the accurate, appropriate letters. And I am just amazed um, when I have broken this down for my students and modeled it and we've practiced it and we've talked about it um, with direct um, handwriting instruction and um, like during our word work activities and I noticed that they make it wrong, how much neater and more fluent writers we have. So it's pretty cool. So enough with that, sorry about the rabbit trail, but in today's video, I'm going to show you the basic lines that are usually used to form the different letters that we have. And if your child is struggling to sit down and write or there's a lot of tears, just focus on, say, the circle. You can get the handwriting squares and just tell them, focus on making the circle inside the square box and have them practice, see what they can do, give them a little bit of a challenge and see if they can do it neater and then continue to challenge them until they've made that progress. And um, it's really neat to see how the students with the prompts and the reminders, how quickly they can catch on and then they're forming those letters more accurately um, in a meaningful way. So with that said, I'm gonna jump on to my document camera and we will, I will model the different lines that we can make. Um, so we do the tall line down and we want to start at the top of the box, go from the sky down to the ground and stop. It's important that you give them that starting point and that ending point. Um, 
and if they're a struggling, um, if they're struggling to stay inside the box, you can put a dot where they start and end to help them focus in on that and then gradually release that as they can, as they become more accurate with that. So then the next one is a short line down and you just point out like, this is a short line. So we're going to be in the middle and then we can do the, I call the rainbow line. And we start at the bottom, we go up to the middle and roll down rainbow line. And then we can make our curly C and we start over on the right. We go to curly C towards our hand, curl around, sit on the ground. And this um, curly C can be a tricky movement to master. And so I just um, have the kids put two dots or the parents and they know they start at the top. We go towards the hand, curly C around. Um, and then we have our smile line. We start in the middle. We go down and touch the ground, roll up, smile line. Um, we have our hook around. Our hook around is the opposite of the C. So we start over on the left side of the box, go away from our hand and hook around. And then we have our long line. And I show the kids that this is going to take up two boxes. So that gives them the visual of where to start and stop. And so we start in the middle. We pull down, down, down to, into the ground and stop. We have our long line down. And then we have our J, or we call it our hook line. So we make our long line down, hook up, hook line. And then we have our shepherd hook. We start mid sky, go up and roll to the ground and stop. We have short line across. It just goes across in the middle and we stop it. We have our, uh, our, our circle line, so we curly C up and close. Then we have our diagonal line. We go down the slide. And then on the other one, we go up the slide. And sometimes, depending on the kid, I have them put those two together. Down the slide, up the slide. And of course, that's V, but that helps them get that movement. Um, and then we go down the long slide. Down the long slide. So these are the basic lines that you can model and have your child practice. Now you may be wondering, how do I help my child practice these lines? And what I recommend is figuring out what they can do easily. Usually at the age of um, two, three, the students are um, able to make a circle and they can make their long lines and their across lines. And so just honing in on that and having them try to do it inside the box will help build that practice. Keep the sessions short. If you, um, if your child can't make it for five minutes and he can only do three of those, um, lot, three boxes, do those three boxes, praise them, give feedback, and then move on. And then the next time, try um, to get them to go a little longer and a little longer. Um, and this is if they're a new writer or they've just been a reluctant writer. Um, and then if you're, um, the same can go for kids who struggle to form these single lines, just figure out what they can do and then give them that little push and set a goal to help them see where they're going. I have my students focus on their handwriting because like I said in the beginning of the video, handwriting correlates with reading fluency. And um, there's been amazing research that has shown it um, through data and stuff. And then there's been experts and specialists who apply it within their own businesses that has the case studies that show that that fluent handwriting with um, students forming it the proper way correlates to the reading proficiency of the student. So that's why we push it. Once again, some people will be like, this is nitpicky. This is ridiculous, but keep it lighthearted, make it a game. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell because in the next couple weeks, I'm going to 
create a video that shows some ways to make this more fun and engaging, but still focusing on the formations. So there you have it, how to create those basic lines. Um, pick out a couple of those lines and have your child um, practice it. And if you have any questions in the comments below, just ask and I'm here to help you and to direct you in the right way so that we can build confident readers so we have lifelong learners who are able to make a difference in the world. So until next time, take care and goodbye.